Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. These men that came from the east were philosophers. The Greek word here for the wise men is magi, essentially magicians, oriental scientists, if you will. Coming from the east, they were Gentiles, not Jews. They were heathens, no doubt. They primarily studied the stars, believing in some sort of wise creator out there of whom consisted all knowledge and wisdom. But just because they were heathen doesn't mean that they didn't have access to the word of God and the prophecies of the coming Messiah. I'm Dean Cullinane, and you're listening to Why They Did That, a show that explores the motivations of biblical characters and how their choices can guide yours. You might remember learning the story of Balaam as a child. Balaam was the reluctant prophet of God. He's the one that God spoke to through a donkey. Anyways, Balaam actually prophesied of Jesus' birth. His words are recorded in Numbers 24, 17, and he said, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob, a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Balaam told of a king that would rise out of Israel, a star that would come out of Jacob. But you may ask, What does Balaam have to do with this class of wise men? Well, prior to being a spokesman for God, Balaam was actually one of the so-called wise men. And so it should be no surprise that his messianic prophecy would be passed down throughout the ages. Thanks to Balaam, the wise men knew that when looking for the Messiah, they had to look for a magnificent star that would rise over the Holy Land. Interestingly enough, it wasn't just the wise men that came from the east. Balaam did too. Numbers 22 verse 5 tells us that Balaam was based at Pethor, which is not only near the river Euphrates, but close by to the great Babylon itself. Now, the kings of Babylon were renowned for surrounding themselves with four groups of people the Chaldeans, the astrologers, the sorcerers, and wise men. Could it be that the wise men that hear of the birth of Christ were actually associated, if not one and the same, with the wise men of Babylon? Perhaps. Now, why is the link between the wise men and Babylon necessary? Well, think about it. The wise men knew to look for the star, but they never knew when to look. You see, there are many prophecies of the coming of the Messiah scattered through the Old Testament, but there is only one prophecy that tells of the exact time that he was to come. And that prophecy is found in the book of Daniel, chapter 9. And guess where Daniel prophesied that? In Babylon. And such a prophecy would no doubt have become legend amongst the people, even the wise men, that the savior of the captive Jews was coming and they had a prophetic timeline that would tell them just when. So it should be no surprise that the wise men did show up. They had heard of the signs. They knew the approximate time of his coming and the star appeared to confirm it. And so they moved just as Abraham did centuries ago by faith. And it appeared that they might have known a little more than they're given credit for. The East was saturated with goodly and precious gifts, and the Magi did not leave empty-handed. 
but I don't think the gifts they brought were just happenstance. The gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh actually hinted at an understanding of the Messiah that none at that time could dare fathom. Gold was a gift that was given to a king. Frankincense was, of course, an incense, the burning of which represented prayer as it would ascend in the sanctuary, and the myrrh? The myrrh was a fragrant perfume that was used in the embalming of dead bodies. It can be no coincidence that these three gifts highlight the threefold ministry of the Messiah himself, the King of the world, the High Priest of the heavenly sanctuary, and the crucified prophet that would conquer death. Given the route the wise men took, in that they went directly to Jerusalem, it's obvious that they didn't have the full picture. They knew of Balaam's prophecy, and maybe even Daniel's, but they clearly had not heard of Micah's, that which told of the Messiah's specific place of birth, Bethlehem. But perhaps this was the will of God all along. Knowing only to go to Jerusalem, the Magi wander into the streets of the holy city. One can only harbor a guess that upon their arrival, they expected to see jubilation and hear of the celebration of the birth of their king. Surely the Messiah's coming would be the joyful burden of every tongue. But no. All they find are the Jews hustling and bustling through their everyday life. And, and so they head to the temple. Perhaps for some curious reason, the priests and scribes have not yet shared the news with the common people. But to their amazement, they find none who seem to even have a knowledge of the newborn king. I mean, this is everything that the Jews are living for. The signs are there. The time is now. There's, there's the star. There's the prophecies. But they knew not. How ironic that they were so busy making sure that when the Messiah came, everything would be perfect, that they completely missed him altogether. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Even to this day, over 2,000 years later, the majority of the Jews are still going about their daily work, waiting and hoping for the Messiah to come for the first time, 2,000 years after he came and left already. But it's so easy to sit here and mock and ridicule. The question almost asks itself, are we all that different? The Bible told not only of Christ's first appearing, but his second also. And just because the second is a loud and worldwide event doesn't mean that his first coming was to go under the radar. Christ's birth wasn't a secret. In fact, the scriptures couldn't stop talking about it. To those that were studying the Bible and searching their hearts, it was as clear as day that the Messiah had come. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Have times really changed? Our days are consumed with the very same substance. Eating, drinking, marrying, building and planting, working and sleeping. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Are these things bad? No. But they beg the question, how are you living your life? 
Does your life confess that you are awaiting the soon coming of the Messiah? Or does it testify that you quite like it here? That you're content in this world of sin, pain, and death. That you see no reason to be ready. That you hear no urgency in the message. God is calling his people to come out of the world before it is consumed. But no doubt the prophecy of John 1.11 has a dual application because once again, he will come unto his own and his own will receive him not. The message of the Christmas season is simple. It's why we say, remember the reason for the season. That the Christ of the world came from heaven to save us. But lest we forget, Christmas is also the season for reason. Just as the Magi did. To reason from the scriptures and see that the coming of the Messiah is again near. You must wonder if history will repeat itself once more. Are there a group of people on the earth that believe they know God, that they know His Word, and that they know the signs of the times? Yes. Except today we call ourselves Christians instead of Jews. But the Jews live for that very moment, that glorious appearing, and they still missed it. Will we miss it too? Could it be that there are others out there Gentiles, heathens, people that you and I might call unbelievers that are searching with all their hearts looking for the coming of God. And maybe they even come to us in the same way that the Magi came to Jerusalem. And they just see us living our lives like nothing is about to happen. And so they take our word for it. I mean, if anyone would know about the coming of the Messiah, it would be his followers, right? And it doesn't look like the Christians really believe Jesus is coming. Otherwise, they'd be ready. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to stop talking about it. This is why God has not given us the specific date of his second appearing or the date of anything else that is to happen for that matter. Because no message is more urgent than the message of now. Jesus is coming. Are you ready now? The Christmas season is the season to reason. And God invites you to reason in Isaiah 1.18. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. The real Christian message is not just that Jesus Christ came as a babe, but that he lived as a man. Tempted in all points like you and I, yet without sin. And this perfect, spotless man died for you. Literally died that we may reason, that we may come to God in all of our sins and be made as white as snow. Enjoy the holidays. Enjoy the festive spirits, the family reunions, the joyous gatherings and the wonderful food. But this Christmas, remember not only his first coming, but pray that you would be ready for his second, for the second coming of Emmanuel, God with us. He that hath an ear, let him hear, and you just heard our latest show. If you'd like to hear more or hearken back to a previous episode, you can find us at whythedidthat.org. Please also subscribe to our show at Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow us on your favorite social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Why They Did That. This show was produced and edited by Christian Freed. Finally, we want to thank Weimar Institute, the media department, and especially Teresa Costello for help making this possible. Once again, I'm Dean Cullinane, and you're listening to Why They Did That. <laughs> <laughs>